Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video, and today we're reviewing the Blitzwolf KB1. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what we have here is a 60% keyboard. It's wireless, it runs off Bluetooth 5.0 or Type-C, it's got RGB, it's got software, and it's pretty affordable under $50. So is it any good? Well, let's go ahead and find out. So we have the box, and inside the box we have the nylon piece here. We can go ahead and throw that away finally after a month. Then we have the manual, a nice two meter long braided type C cable, as well as this keycap puller. Very nice. When it comes to build quality, this keyboard feels really good. It's pretty decent for the price, and I can't really complain. It's got a nice heft to it, weighing at around 570 grams. It's got the RGB, it's got the wireless, it's got the direct connection, and overall it's a pretty nice keyboard under $50. Being a 60% gaming keyboard, it's got some compromises of course. For me personally, usually with 60% keyboards, I miss the arrow keys, a delete key, and a proper shift key. And in this keyboard, it does have proper arrow keys, but it does not have a proper delete key. And if I want to do delete, I have to hold FN and hit N. You know, you can't have it both ways unless we wait for another year for someone to make a proper wireless keyboard that doesn't have too many compromises. There are keyboards out there that are not wireless, which have an extra row right here, but really it's not going to be an issue for a whole lot of people. As this is a gaming keyboard, it's meant to look nice, be portable, and of course save space for your gaming mouse. So this keyboard solves the error keys and actually solves the delete key by having a proper piece of software and you can control the lights as well as mapping any of the keys here to anything you want. Mouse clicks, keyboard clicks, shortcuts, programs, you name it, the software has it. And recently there was a firmware update which uh, I have no idea what it does. There is no change log, the software is in Chinese, but I ran it anyway and I'll leave links for the software and the firmware updates in the description down below. As it is kind of tough to actually find the software, it's on a different page and not the official product page. That being said, personally, the only thing that I don't like about this keyboard, again, is the shift key, but I got used to it. I used this keyboard for a month for editing, gaming, and just general browsing and typing. And really, it served me well, except for the battery life. The battery life here, it could be better, but of course, it's all because of the RGBs. I had the RGBs on because that's what most people are going to have it on for. And typically, I got about a week of usage before I started noticing glitching, before I started noticing some lag and disconnection issues, which I then had to plug it in. So, about a week of usage with the lights on, with a typical charge time of about 3 hours. So, if you were to go ahead and turn off the lights, or actually dim them, which you can actually do in the software, as well as in the keyboard directly itself, you can probably push it to 2 weeks, or even about 3 weeks, if you really don't care about lights. Speaking of lights, this keyboard does come in two different colors. It comes in the black, and it comes in the white. And no, this is not a Blitzwolf keyboard. This is a Motorspeed CK62, which also happens to be a 60% keyboard. The reason I have this keyboard here is to show you guys what another 60% keyboard looks like, and what the Blitzwolf might look like in a white color. So I can go ahead and turn off the lights, and I can go ahead and turn on the LEDs and show you guys what they would look like side by side when the lights are off. And you're probably noticing that the CK62 here has nicer colors, mostly because it is a white keyboard, so all the colors diffuse into each other and have a nice transition and a nice overall splash, which of course they're going to look much, much brighter. And here's what they look like directly side by side. And the same thing goes for the individual keys without the keycaps. We can see that they are equally bright. And here's our last look of what they look like side by side. So, back to the Blitzwolf keyboard. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the individual keys. So once again, the Blitzwolf comes in Gatorons only, which are really nice cheap switches, and they get the job done. They're pretty fantastic. They feel really nice. They sound very good. And overall, haven't had any issues with them. I believe it comes in blue, brown, and reds. And personally, I went for the browns because I'm kind of done with the blue switches. It's, it's getting too old. But brown switches are just very nice. As for the actual switches, although the molding here is not great on the inside, they look perfectly good on the outside, and I believe they are ABS double shot. And finally, before we go ahead and take a look at the software, here's what the back looks like. We got two rubber feet on the top, as well as two adjustable rubber feet. This whole entire part is rubber, which is really nice, and it does elevate your keyboard to a really nice angle, but of course, that is subjective. We got some information here, the actual on-off switch, and on the bottom we have two sets of feet. One of them is meant for being flat, and the other one is meant to actually compensate for the angle that the keyboard will be at when you have the kickstands on. So this keyboard is not going anywhere. It is very nicely planted. And finally on the left side of the keyboard as well you find the Type-C connection. So that is pretty much it for the outside. Let's go ahead and take a look at the software and wrap this video up. Let's go. So here is the Blitzwolf software and keep in mind that you can only run the software on USB. You cannot customize the keyboard using Bluetooth. So keep that in mind. Knowing that, let's take a look. First of all, in the settings here, when you install the software, you want to go ahead and change into English, which is nice. You have this uh, UI text color, which is uh, 
I don't know, kind of pointless, but whatever, it's there. Over here, we have the reset factory settings and we can keep that on off. And right across from the settings menu, we have the profiles and we can pretty much make as many profiles as you want. But exiting out of that, we can go ahead and take a look at the customization menu, which is actually really cool and it has a whole lot of options. And basically you can go ahead and select any of the keys and set it to whatever you want. We can have it on default, keyboard, mouse function, macro combination, run program, multimedia, and all that good stuff. For forbidden, it basically just disables that key. And basically what I have done here is set my bracket key into a delete key. Basically by clicking on that, hitting delete and clicking okay, and bam, just like that, I have changed that key into a delete key, which is pretty nice. So there's a whole lot of capability you can do here. You can run a program, you can have it open a web page, but it's not as versatile as other keyboards, of course, like Corsair, but that's to be expected. Next up, we have the backlight tab, and basically this is where you can go ahead and customize your lighting without having to remember which keys do what and cycling through all the different modes. Here we can select the modes individually from the drop-down menu, and we can also customize it to whatever we want. We can even do per key customization, which is really, really cool. And for example, I could set the number keys to being red, followed by selecting the WASD keys and setting them to maybe a bright cyan color, and then setting up my arrow keys to maybe a lime green and really doing whatever I want. And exiting out of that, we can go ahead and pretty much go through any of the different options. We have colorful and pretty much just play around with all the different cool uh, animations. Or just turn it off. Next, we have the gaming mode, and basically, you can go ahead and turn off Alt Tab and Alt F4 just in case if you get tricked by someone telling you that you get extra money by hitting Alt F4. Yes, you can disable the Windows key, but you can do that individually by hitting the FN key plus Windows and it'll lock it up like so. And finally, we have the macro section. It's pretty confusing looking, but uh, you can do different macros if you want. Let's go ahead and say fast mouse click, make a new one. And we can just pretty much leave it at default and insert the keys here and hit apply. And then we can go back to customize, I believe, and set one of the keys to that macro. So let's see macro. Yep, there it is. So we can have it play multiple times, click to stop, or should I say toggle? and then play one time. So there's a whole lot of possibilities with the customization that you can do for the individual keys. So that being said, let's go ahead and finally conclude the video. And other than that guys, that is actually pretty much it for this video. The only other thing I wanna talk about here is the actual Bluetooth mode versus the USB mode. Now, of course, most of you are probably gonna be using it on Bluetooth, but at the same time, if you're looking to save battery life, but you still like your RGB colors, you can hook it up through USB. That being said, if you have multiple devices, this keyboard has, once again, the cool function of setting up multiple Bluetooth devices. For example, you can have your desktop paired up to one, and your laptop, your phone, your TV, and maybe your school computer, and you can take this keyboard anywhere and easily switch between the different modes, like so, and be able to use this keyboard literally anywhere you want where there's Bluetooth connection, or Type-C. And other than that, that is actually pretty much it for this video. You can go ahead and pair it up with the G305 and have yourself a pretty sweet pair of peripherals. Of course, the only thing missing would be a nice wireless headset, which I will have a video on very soon. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.